Hello, today we'll, we will be discussing um, basically the hormones of pregnancy. Yeah, the hormones of pregnancy we'll, we will be discussing today. And here I have a uterus. By the way, it's like 6 a.m. I just got up. Um, we will be discussing the hormones. And here we have a uterus. We have the ovary. And this will represent our ova. And this is our sperm. So in our previous video, when we learned about ovulation, we said that the um, ovulation, it bursts out of the graphene follicle due to an LH surge, and the ova travels down from the, um, travels down from the ovaries into the um, fallopian tubes of the uterus and whatnot. Now, the cells which were in the, the cells which were in the, um, which formed the graphene follicle became the luteal cells and i forgot to mention in the previous video that the granulosa cells becomes the large luteal cells and the thicker cells become the small luteal cells okay so this is our corpus luteum which is the remainder of our graphene follicle now in the ampulla the egg the egg travels on the fallopian tubes and into um into the uterus cavity now, if we were quite yes at that time, the sperm will travel up and it will fuse with the egg forming a zygote. Okay, so this egg will fuse to form a zygote. Now, this zygote has two copies of DNA now. Now, this zygote will travel down um, from the ampulla in the Philippine tubes and will embed in the uterus. I should draw my zygote as black my previous video is black okay so this zygote undergoes a process known as cleavage where it divides into multiple cells identical cells by mitosis we have the 16 it goes from 2 to 4 um, 8 16 and 32 at the 16 stage it is called a blastomere and at the um, 42 stage it's called a morula because really it looks like a mulberry so this is what a mulberry looks like. Sorry. This is what a mulberry looks like. And we could see that it looks like a mulberry. Eventually it will look like a mulberry. Okay, so these cells right here looks like a mulberry. So if I were to go to my next slide right here, we can clearly see that this looks like a mulberry okay right here okay looks like a mulberry okay and in this in the previous video on ovulation i did show you this corpus luteum um which is the degeneration of the graphene follicle and i said before the small cells are the thicker cells and the large luteal cells become or were they they were from the granulosa cells okay so now that our it's from it's a morula at that stage and keeps dividing. Now that our morula um, forms, the morula splits into two types of cells, the trophoblast and the embryoblast. The embryoblast is what becomes the, the so if I were to draw this out, we will have a whole bunch of cells right here. And we'll have another layer of cells around. So this morula splits into two. It splits into the embryoblast or the inner cell mass, which becomes the embryo, and around it is the trophoblast. But this is not what we'll not be talking about embryology today. We're talking about pregnancy hormones. Okay. Okay. So this morula implants, or I should say the, um, yeah, the morula implants into the uterus, more likely the superior uterus, but it can implant anywhere in the uterus. Now the once the morula divides, remember we said it has two types of cells. It has the trophoblast and the inner cell mass or embryoblast. Now the trophoblast splits into two types of cells again the cytotrophoblast and the syncytiotrophoblast okay and remember our corpus luteum um well if we went to any biology class we know that the corpus luteum is responsible for producing estrogen and progesterone to maintain the lining of the uterus so that the egg has a place to implant and it's not shedded okay so how is this corpus luteum maintained well there is a there is um a mechanism 
our sin cytotrophic blast, which is this one here, produces a hormone which maintains um, the corpus luteum. So the hormone is called human coronary gonadotropin hormone, or HCG. Okay. Now HCG is a hormone. It kind of mimics LH. And remember, the luteal. When we were talking about ovulation, we said that the luteal cells is point to LH. So to prevent the corpus luteum from degenerating, the um, since cytotrophoblast produces a hormone called as human coronary gonadotropin hormone, and it goes into the corpus luteum and it stimulates the corpus luteum to produce um, to produce the hormone progesterone and estrogen. Okay, so if I were to show you this right here, right here we have what FSH looks like, LH looks like, and human coronary gonadotropin hormone looks like. Now these hormones, well, if I should say FSH and LH, and there's another hormone called TSH. They're all glycoprotein hormones, meaning that they're nothing but um, carbohydrates with proteins or like little proteins on it. So this structure here would be the protein, and here would be the, the carbohydrate moiety part of it. <clears throat> okay, with FSH, with all of them, we have two 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 subunits. We have an alpha unit and a beta unit, and for LH and FSH, you can see that their beta units are almost identical. This is why human coronary gonadotropin hormone, or HCG, sorry, mimics LH because they look identical. The only difference is that um, the N represents N-linked glycoproteins. The only difference is that human coronary gonadotropin hormone has one extra N-linked glycoprotein and four olein glycoproteins. And what we mean by olein glycoproteins is that the carbohydrate moiety is bound to either a serine or a threonine, whereas in N-link, the carbohydrate moiety is bound to an aspergine. So we can see that if LH and FSH, sorry, LH and HCG are identical, so if HCG can mimic LH in a sense. Okay, so now we're back to our previous video. So the synthesis of trophoblast produces human chronic hormone which stimulates this corpus luteum to produce progesterone and estrogen okay so that the cells can remain all right now this um, human chronic hormone doesn't last for long it um, stops being produced eventually because now our baby, sorry, we now have a placenta. It now has a placenta so it doesn't need the um, corpus luteum again because the placenta can produce all hormones on itself on its own. Um, it can produce all the hormones on its own. So if I were to show you a picture of of the hormones produced. It will look something like this. So, at the beginning of the um, first trimester, I should say 8 to 10, eight to, um, 10 weeks, our same cytotrophoblast produces a um, human current hormone, which is almost like um, LH, which helps the corpus luteum to maintain its um, production of estrogen and progesterone. But eventually, the, the um, placenta takes over. So, here we have now it's in months. So first trimester, we have a peak in human chronic um, gonadotropin hormone, and this is what is um, measured in pregnancy tests. We can get it as early as one, um, two weeks in a blood test. So here we have the hormones produced by the corpus luteum right here, and everything beyond that is produced by the placenta and everything before that is produced by the corpus luteum okay so the corpus luteum from 8 to 10 weeks or below that is responsible for producing the progesterone and estrogen but after 10 weeks the placenta takes over the production of um, progesterone and estrogen okay so this has been hormones of pregnancy and i hope that was helpful